qualche altra domanda? Tornate, tornate spesso in Etiopia, come, come procede l'attività dell'ospedale? Are you going back often to Ethiopia or not? And do you know how in the hospital where you worked uh, is now going, how, what they are doing? Yeah, the hospital is functioning well because there are, uh, when we came to Ethiopia, we had a plan. Uh, we wanted the hospital to be, you know, it should be run by Ethiopians. So as soon as we came to Ethiopia, we tried to ask people for money to send some of the workers there to, to study, to become doctors, or to become nurses, or to become assistant nurses. And we did that. So I think totally we had how many students did we have? A lot. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> A lot. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think I trained like 25 Ethiopian doctors. <coughs> I have been training in basic surgery. And then some of them, they were interested, so I, I taught them more surgery. And at least three became surgeons, and one is back, that was Dr. Tariku. Then we have one trained eye surgeon, he's a very clever eye surgeon. One is a gynecologist, and one is an internist. And now we have one who is under training, he will finish in two years, and he will be an orthopedic surgeon. Because orthopedic surgery is the most neglected part of medical uh, healthcare in Ethiopia, I think, after psychiatry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ethiopianish? No. <laughs> <laughs> so there are, there are doctors and nurses and <coughs> midwives, and so the hospital is functioning <coughs> well, well, yes. And do you go down? No, we haven't. You have been once mm. back, but I have, we, uh, we haven't. But we have a plan to go there because there is a, a doctor who is going to, to what do you call it? Become an uh, orthopedist. So we will go for his, uh, for mm. his uh, when he finish. That's all. Eh, sì, l'ospedale continua a funzionare bene anche perché il loro primo obiettivo quando sono andati in Etiopia è stato eh, quello di far lavorare lì medici etiopi, di, di avere persone del, del etiopi che, che mandassero avanti l'ospedale e quindi si sono sempre attivati per formare dei nuovi medici, dei nuovi chirurghi di varie eh, specializzazioni e sono riusciti appunto a formarne alcuni. Eh, con appunto, varie specializzazioni fra cui eh, proprio la chirurgia ortopedica che è uno dei rami più negletti in Etiopia dopo la psichiatria e, e quindi l'ospedale funziona e lui è tornato una volta e, ha, e adesso hanno in uh, progetto di tornare insieme a un medico che, che ha finito appunto il suo, il suo tirocinio Hello. Uh, just a question about the national health system in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, what do you think it will be the future of this system? You said it is going to be collapsed soon, or what do you think? No, of course it will not collapse. Uh, but it will be more and more people producing less and less uh, medical, uh, I mean, in, in the medical field. They will produce more and more documents. And it's not only me who are suffering from this, it's all my colleagues who are complaining. And it's not only in the healthcare system, it's the same in the, in the justice system and in schools, that the teachers are not doing what they should, they, 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 they use more and more time for documentation and the same with the police they don't catch the thieves they, they document instead and uh, there is there is a uh, recently a survey made or not a survey actually it's a scientific uh, research made by two swedish sociologists they have started for 20 years and they have um, uh, written a book which is called the 
uh, administrative society. It's very dry to read. It's a lot of statistics. And there you can read that in some part of the, the healthcare system in Sweden, the doctors will use maybe 10% or 14% of their work hours for uh, patient-related medical work. The rest is for administrative work, sitting in front of the computer, reg registering. I mean, it's not like in Ethiopia. You have a patient with a fracture, and you treat the fracture, and that's it. In, in Sweden, you have to register. You have to register the type of fracture. After a special classification, is it a fracture 14A, B, C, or what? And then you have to register how the patient got the fracture. Did the fell, and did the fell, fell in the same level or in another level? What is indoor, outdoor? Was a vehicle? Uh, was it with a car or an, another motorbike or bicycle? Was it a driver? If another car was in it, was the car standing or driving? And I mean, you use more time with this registration uh, than you actually use for the medical treatment. So it's a la domanda era se pensa che il sistema sanitario in Svezia va davvero verso il collasso e che ne sarà il suo futuro. La risposta è che non, non è che collasserà, però eh, e non è solo lui a lamentarsi della situazione, ma tutti i suoi colleghi, il problema è davvero questa crescente quantità di mole di lavoro burocratico da fare per cui eh, attualmente un medico usa il 10-15% del suo tempo per fare il medico e tutto il resto per riempire una quantità infinita di moduli con tutti i dettagli, le casistiche di quello che deve fare prima e quello che ha fatto, di quello che è successo al paziente, eccetera, eccetera. C'era forse un'altra cosa? Lo studio sociologico. Ah sì, che c'è questo, è stato scritto... Una, un libro su, su questo, da, che è una ricerca che è durata vent'anni e ha, ecco che il, il fatto è che questo non riguarda solo la medicina ma molte, molte professioni, i poliziotti, gli insegnanti, sono moltissimi professionisti che si trovano in una situazione di questo tipo dove cresce sempre di più la mole delle scartoffie da compilare. And these statistics which they're collecting, I don't know what they use it for. I mean, nine, 85, 87% of all Swedes that die in their bed, but still they have not prohibited the use of the bed. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> si chiede cosa servono tutte queste statistiche, visto che il 90% degli svedesi muore nel loro letto e non hanno ancora proibito l'uso del letto. <laughs> 